Well, I'm no longer Phoebe Buffay. That's great. You changed your name? Yes, I did. Meet Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. <laughs> Hello name nerds, my name is Patrick and welcome to Fun With First Names where each week we're into the meaning, origin and some extra fun facts behind one specific first name. And this week we're looking to the first name of Phoebe. But before we begin, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's become a patron in the most recent week. So a huge thank you to one Laura Veronica Granice and one CJ. Thank you guys both so much. Supporting Name Explained on Patreon is the best way to help not only support the channel, but help improve the channel. I'm actually filming this video with my brand spanking new camera. I mean, I bought a new microphone as well, but that microphone decided to not work. So I'm recording normal audio from the camera, so apologies if this video sounds a bit rubbish. The ongoing issues with audio on this channel continue. But no, I was only able to afford this camera thanks to my amazing patrons. I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. You guys also help me allow to have Amber edit these videos to make them better. Supporting me at my Patreon helps improve the channel immensely. If you want to become a patron, visit patreon.com forward slash name explain, link down below. Not only does it help support and finance the channel and improve the channel, but you get extra goodies in return. You get ad free videos and exclusive content. Go check it all out, it'll be linked down below. Go look at it. Thank you very much. But anyway, on with today's name of Phoebe. And Phoebe is a name of ancient Greek origins. And not only is it of ancient Greek origins, it comes from ancient Greek mythology. In the mythology of ancient Greece, Phoebe was the name of one of the Greek titans. I believe she was linked with the moon, and the name Phoebe was originally Phoebe in Greek. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And it means things like shining and bright and gleaming. This is probably because, as mentioned, this titan was linked with the moon. So the moon is shiny and bright. Probably comes from there, I imagine. This name was then adapted by the Romans into Phoebe, as we know today. Then it came to the French, and then it came to the English. 1066, you know this drill by now. That's where the name Phoebe comes from. But what I'm trying to say is the name Phoebe is a seriously old one, and it has actually remained relatively unchanged. And that ancient, unchanged fact in Phoebe is perfectly represented in the spelling of this name. Phoebe is a name that's always had a pretty weird spelling, at least I've always thought it's a little bit weird. It's spelled P-H-O-E-B-E. -E. And that O, slight bang in the middle of this name, it's always seemed a bit off to me. It feels like the name should be spelled P-H-E-O-B-E, -E, but then that spells Phoebe, or like Phoebe as that should be pronounced. It should be gone all together. That like, maybe we should just get rid of that O. What is that O even doing in the middle of Phoebe anyway? Silent O's really do not appear all too often, especially in the middle of words, but here it does with the name Phoebe. How did it get there? Well, unfortunately, we don't have an answer for this name specifically, However, there is another word of ancient Greek origins that is very similar to the name Phoebe, and we actually have more evidence and history of this word and how it came to be how it is. There's of course the name slash word Phoenix. I guess Phoenix is a name. It can be a proper name like Phoenix right, I suppose, but it's just a normal noun most of the time for those big flappy angry birds. Are phoenixes that angry? I don't think they're after pigs. I don't know, but phoenixes, you know them. Probably. There's an order of them, I think, once. So, funnily enough, despite sounding so similar, Phoenix and Phoebe aren't actually etymologically linked. They don't have similar ancient meanings and origins. However, they're spelt incredibly the same, both beginning with P-H-O-E in English today, and they're both of ancient Greek roots. Well, actually, I think Phoenix was of Phoenician roots. Phoenician, that's another word. Should have thought about that. Phoenicians another word with the PH at the beginning, an OE sort of thing going on. Um, but the Phoenicians and Greeks, a lot of shared culture between those two. This word is pretty much Greek in origin. Apologies to any Phoenicians watching, so I first say you. Phoenix and Phoebe most noticeably have that OE in the middle of the name, with that O seemingly being more or less redundant. It's really safe to assume that by understanding how Phoenix got this O in its name, it's the same reason how Phoebe got this O in its name too. So for this video, instead of looking into the history of the name Phoebe, we're going to look into the history of the name Phoenix, because they're probably the exact same story, I imagine. Tell me if I'm wrong down below. Phoenix in ancient Greek was spelt something like this, and it was pronounced according to Forvo. Anyway, thank you for the ancient Greek person pronouncing ancient Greek on Forvo. You're the real MVP on this video. But apparently it was pronounced something like Phoenix. Phoenix. I've got it written here on my phone. I wrote it out phonetically as P-H-O-Y-N-E-X. Phoenix. That's what I'm going with. A bit different. Go check it out for yourself below. Once again, thank you to whoever pronounced Phoenix 
in ancient Greek on four though. You're really important, you're special to me. That oi sound in the middle of Phoenix was made with those two Greek characters. And if you look at the Greek spelling of the name Phoebe, or Phoebe as I imagine it was pronounced, that has the exact same two characters in the middle of it too. Interesting, eh? Like I said, these words sound very similar to one another. And when the Romans adapted this Greek word of Phoenix into the Latin alphabet, you know the Latin alphabet, the one most of us are using to this day, they represent that oi sound with an O and an E. And to be fair, that did make a degree of sense. O and E made kind of like an O sound. It made sense that they would use it to represent that oi sound. I mean, even to this day, that OE make a similar sound. It was like toe or heroes. OE kind of makes that sort of sound, hence why they use it. Well done, Romans. You did some clever stuff every now and then. Though O and E really don't make that sound in names like Phoebe and in words like Phoenix, that's for sure. They make a more harsh E sound. Like maybe they should be spelled P H E E B E, Phoebe. That would make a bit more sense, I suppose. But no, we're stuck with that O E for some reason. Though it's safe to assume that the ancient Romans would have pronounced Phoebe and Phoenix like Phoenix and Phoebe, though we don't know for sure. We don't have any recordings of ancient Romans speaking Latin annoyingly because they didn't invent any recording equipment. Come on, lads, come on. You could have recorded something that would have helped us so much if you just invented some recording equipment. And we really would have appreciated that. So way back then, these spellings would have made an awful lot more sense. So I'm sure you're starting to begin to realize that the spelling of these names aren't weird. The spelling of these names are correct. This is how these names were pronounced once upon a time. It's just that pronunciation has changed. And just to make matters more confusing, not only has the pronunciation of these words changed, but the spelling hasn't changed to reflect this different pronunciation. That's, that seems to be the issue here. So how did that ancient Greek word of phoenix end up being pronounced like phoenix? Well, that probably once again comes from Greek to Latin, and then when Latin started to become Old French. In Old French, this Greek or Latin phoenix became Phoenix, spelled F-E-N-I-X, and that is perhaps the best way you could spell this name because it just makes sense. That's, if I hear the word Phoenix, I imagine it would be spelled with an F, which is an E in the middle. Well done, Old French, you did us proud. As to how it became Phoenix in Old French, that just comes from the long history of vowels changing sound over the course of history and through languages. This is something we've talked about an awful lot in the past of vowels. As the language went on and as words changed, they kind of changed their pronunciation, but the words they are in didn't. Here in Britain, we literally had something called the Great Vowel Shift, where the sounds vowels made changed slowly over time, but the spellings didn't. It's why somewhere like uh, Derbyshire is spelled D-E-R-B-Y. It should be like Derby, but no, we pronounce it Derby. We, we're very silly here in the UK. We don't want to change things because why change anything? That should basically be Britain's slogan. Why change? Things are good as they are. Me, not, but we won't talk about that too much. That's a little bit too topical. Though, speaking of the UK, when this word of Phoenix arrived from Old French into the UK, it changed back to its more traditional Latin Greek spelling. Which makes me think, now that I'm saying it out loud, maybe it didn't come with the French in 1066 like so many words did. There's a chance, I guess, Phoenix would have come over with the Romans when they invaded Britain. That's why we probably have a more similar Latin spelling than a French spelling with that PH and the OE in the middle as well. Gosh, now I'm saying that out loud. That's probably the reason why. Probably should have that in my notes, but sometimes these things just come to people, I suppose. But yeah, so in English, we get that sort of French sort of pronunciation of Phoenix because of the great vowel shift and just vowels changing sound in general. But we kept that more traditional Greek Roman spelling with the O slap bang in the middle for no good reason and with a PH instead of an F. That's how Phoenix and Phoebe in turn got that O in the middle, despite the fact it really shouldn't be there. So because of the history of this word Phoenix and the history of vowels changing sound over history, but the spelling of words is not changing to represent those different pronunciations, it led to strange things like Phoenix being spelled with O-E, despite the fact we don't pronounce it like that anymore, despite we pronounce it more like E-E. -E. That's how it got on there. And like I said, while that's about the word Phoenix, it's really safe to assume that's what happened with the name. Phoebe too, because the words are just too similar for that to not be the case, at least in my estimations anyway. Is that actually true? I don't know, but to reiterate, that's just my own theory. Could be wrong, could be right. Let me know your thoughts down below. 
So while Phoebe might have that strange O slap bang in the middle of it today, that really would not have been the case back in the day. That O would have made a lot more sense. And Phoebe is actually a super popular name at the moment. Phoebe is really on the rise. In the USA, it is the 256th most popular girl's name. But here in the UK, it's the 25th most popular girl's name. Well done, Phoebe. You're really, you're really getting up there. You might be first before we know it, but Phoebe's super popular at the moment. And in regards to famous Phoebes, there's of course Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She is the actor, writer, and creator of the great TV series Fleabag, which she also created the original One Woman Play for too, also called Fleabag. Go watch Fleabag if you haven't already. It's a terrific, terrific show. But as well as there being a Phoebe Waller-Bridge, there's also a Phoebe Bridges. She is a singer-songwriter, I believe. Haven't heard any of her music, heard it's good fun. But of course, another famous musical Phoebe is of course, Phoebe Buffet from Friends. But anyway, that's more than enough on the name Phoebe, but what are your thoughts on this name? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you know anyone with the name Phoebe? Are you called Phoebe yourself? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, I just want to share some of the thoughts to you guys on last week's name of Thomas. Jan Koopman, or maybe Jan Koopman, I don't know if you're Dutch or not, they said, I like the idea of Jesus being like, hey, you look like you could be my twin. I'll call you twin. Yay. Yeah, I love this idea of Jesus being really giddy and easily amused and excitable. Like, oh my God, guys, we're like twinsies. That would be amazing. Like, I'd be pretty giddy if I could turn water into wine as well, though, I imagine. Louise Richardson said, one thing you might have added is that a Tom is often the male of a species, like a Tom cat, which is the reason for Tom in Tom and Jerry and a Tom turkey. That is a really good point there, um, Louise. Thank you very much for adding that. Yeah, Tom has become sort of synonymous with masculinity. Many sort of man-based things have Tom added to them, like Tom cats. And in regards to Tom and Jerry, I believe, I, I'd always heard that it came from the nicknames of the British and German troops, Thomas, Tommies and Jerry's. That could be a folk etymology though too. There's probably a link between the two. I never heard of Tom Turkeys though. I love that idea. But of course there's also Tom Boys, which is the word we use when traditionally female people dress up in a traditionally masculine way. But I don't know, people just dress how they want to dress and we don't need to make a comment about it. I don't know, but. That's my fault in the matter anyway. But no, great example. Tom has become very much this masculine man word. And Rob said, knowing these Bible names to be popular, my kids will be named Jarohesh or Melchizedek. Sorry about pronunciation of those. If there's any Jarohesh's or Melchizedek's watching, really bad pronunciation there. But no, too right. There's enough Thomases and Matthews and what other names are in the Bible? John's. There's enough of those going around right now. Let's get some more deep cut names from the Bible out there, more popular. Yes, please, that would be amazing. Go suggest some names down in the comments below, and I'll pick three of those to be put into a poll exclusively for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner of that poll will be the name that covers it in the next Fun With First Things video. So if you enjoy the channel, want to help support it, and have a say in what names get explained, once again, guys, please do consider donating on Patreon. One dollar a month helps out in a huge way. Patreon.com forward slash names me. I talked all about the beginning of this video. Go check for yourself. Anyway, guys, that's more than enough for myself. Apologies about the audio quality in this video once again. It feels like two steps forward, one step back with this channel, but we'll be getting there. This new camera is really exciting to use. Um, my new microphone, not as much. I'm literally going to return that to Amazon straight after filming this video, I think. But don't forget to go follow me on Instagram, where I'm Name Explain YT. And don't forget to go join the Facebook group, Friends on Name Explain. Okay, guys, take care. Though, are you recording him? Yeah. And not only is that slight bang in the middle of today, but which is based on her one woman play, Free 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 Bag, Free 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 Bag. Well, that came out of nowhere, Free Bag. Let's try that again.